reading this morning is from Matthew chapter 8. When Jesus came down the mountainside, large crowds followed him. A man with leprosy came and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hands and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. Immediately the, he was cured of his leprosy. Then Jesus said to him, see that you tell no one about this, but go and show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that, of sacrifice that Moses commanded as a testament to them. When Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came up to him and asked for help. Lord, he said, my servant is at home paralysed, suffering terribly. Jesus said to him, shall I come and heal him? The centurion replied, I don't deserve you to have you come under my roof, but if you just say the word, my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell one to go and he goes. And I say that one come and he comes. I say to my servant, do this and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those following him, Truly, I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with such a great faith as this. I say to you that many will come from the east and the west, and they will take their places in the feast of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, and in the kingdom of heaven. But the subjects of the kingdom will be thrown outside into the darkness, where there will be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, Go. Let it be done just as you have believed it would. 
and the servant was healed at that moment. When Jesus came to Peter's house, he saw Peter's mother-in-law laying in bed with a fever. He touched her hand and the fever left her. She got out of bed and started to wait on them. When evening came, many who were demon-possessed and sick were brought to him and he drove out the spirits with a word and healed the sick. This was to fulfil what was spoken by the prophet Israel. He took up our infirmities and bore our distress. When Jesus saw the crowd around him, he gave, them, he gave orders to cross over to the other side of the lake. And then a teacher of the law came to him and said, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, Foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Another disciple said to him, First let me go and bury my father. Jesus told him, Follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. When he got into the boat and his disciples followed him, a furious storm came up on the lake and so the waves were swept over the boat. But Jesus was sleeping and when his disciples woke him, say, his disciples woke him saying, Lord, save us, we're going to drown. He replied, you have so little faith. Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves and they were completely calm. When the men saw this, they were amazed and said, what kind of man is this? that even the wind and the waves obey him. I woke up this morning and was greeted by the sunrise. I made a simple meal enjoyed a moment of peace and stillness. I stepped into my vehicle and joined a million others traveling to work today. And I arrived safely. I spent most of the day at my job, doing the same familiar tasks that greet me every day that provides for my needs. I took a walk in the park and received a smile from a stranger. I picked up a few groceries. I spoke with my parents. And then I met a friend for coffee. I turned on the radio in my car. I sent a message to someone a thousand miles away. I washed my clothing. I returned home. A very ordinary day. Everything I've experienced today could be considered unremarkable they are all profound blessings, the fingerprints of your hand. Help me to grasp the wonder in the small and the simple, to notice the miracles which surround me constantly, to see the beauty in the commonplace and take nothing for granted. Teach me to make gratitude a lifestyle, one which flows into love, rejoicing, and thankfulness every moment that I draw breath. Amen. There are times in the life of Jesus when he travels to new places in order to teach, preach and minister to those in need. Going on a mission seems to be quite appealing, an adventure more than worthy of a few pictures and posts on social media for people to comment on how amazing it is that we are adventuring for God. 
We could be going to another country where the infrastructure is not as advanced and make a difference by helping poverty stricken people to have access to things like clean water, education, better living conditions or employment opportunities. Or we could help out at a summer camp for young people or go on a fundraising trek. All these things are great experiences where we feel that we are on a mission, furthering God's kingdom in a focused activity. But if we only see these times as taking part in furthering the mission of God in our world, we miss out on a whole load of opportunities to make a difference just where we are. The word staycation has become popular uh, over the past two summers. Going on holiday, especially to a different country, is great. It adds to our lives as we experience different cultures, food and amazing scenery. But over these few months, last months, it has neither been safe, appropriate or permitted to go on holiday. And so many people have stayed at home and explored their immediate location. Many people have been surprised to find just how much enjoyment in, they can find in local parks, places of interest and coffee shops near to home. This series explores what a spiritual staycation might look like. And this week we look at interruptions. Are they an unwelcome distraction to our carefully planned schedule? Or opportunities that God might send our way to be on his mission in the world? There are of course needs in every community. Jesus was intentional, loving and kind when responding to those who interrupted his daily living. As the people of God, we too can live missionally. We can live incarnationally, being involved in the lives of those around us and responding to their needs. All of Jesus' ministry was conducted in quite a small geographical area near to his home. It wasn't until Paul that we find adventuring to God, for God included boat trips and shipwrecks to far-flung places, engaging with different cultures and peoples. Jesus shows this sort of adventuring is perhaps not for everyone. We can serve God effectively and significantly by responding to the call of Jesus to go and make disciples just where we are. But we don't always see the opportunities that God might give us in our daily living as a call to go and make a difference. In our ordinary, ordered lives of routines and schedules, it's easy to miss opportunities as unwelcome interruptions. In Matthew chapter 7, Jesus has just come down from a mountain where he's been teaching, likely for several days. Not only is he being followed by the crowd, but in the passage that we shared earlier and throughout his ministry, we see Jesus is constantly interrupted by people at every turn. First, it's the man with leprosy asking to be cleansed. Jesus obliged, but instructs the healed man not to tell anyone. Next, as Jesus returns to his hometown of Capernaum, an army commander comes and asks Jesus to heal his servant with only a word. Jesus recognises the military leader's great faith and honours that request, even with a word of warning to those who perhaps haven't got that level of faith and trust in him. They then go to Peter's house, where they discover Peter's mother-in-law is ill. Jesus, seeing this, has compassion on her, heals her fever, and she immediately, come, uh, immediately gets up and busies herself in service to others. In the evening, word has got out that Jesus is around and more and more people come to Jesus asking for help and Jesus responds to, to all the sick. Lastly, we see Jesus is awakened from a nap by his disciples to calm a storm. Each time Jesus listens and responds to the needs that are around him. C.S. Lewis once wrote, The great thing, if one can, 
is to stop regarding all the unpleasant things as interruptions to one's own or real life. The truth is, of course, that what, what, what one calls the interruptions are precisely one's real life. The life that God is sending one day after another. What one calls real life is the phantom of one's own imagination. In other words, C.S. Lewis is saying that it's those interruptions that bring that vibrancy and energy to our ministry and our life with Jesus. We can be confident that God is at work even in the most mundane and ordinary moments of our lives. Those times when life is a bit dull and boring, as well as those times when we are energised and excited by what we can do for him. I've had many conversations recently with people who have been surprised when they've looked back over the last 16 months of lockdown to see that how full their lives was, not with the usual activity and busyness, but they've had more time to read, to reflect, to pray for and to telephone others. In our religious culture and traditions, there tends to be a separation in our minds between what is spiritual and what is secular. We have those times when we are in church and engaged in our time for God. And then we have our priorities and our schedules which in our own minds do not necessarily connect with God. If anything unexpected happens to interrupt our plans, we see them as an inconvenience or a nuisance. But there was no such divide for Jesus. The whole of his life, every moment was lived for God and for others. Interruptions to the plans of his day all added to the tapestry of a life and a calling dedicated to God. One such interruption came my way just the other day. I was in a queue buying some lunch and in my mind I didn't really have time to be there. But behind me in the queue was a smartly dressed young man obviously out from, uh, for his lunch from a, the world of business who spotted the Salvation Army logo on my shirt. I used to live with the Salvation Army, he began, in Manchester, and then proceeded to tell me a little of his life story and how he had ended up in one of, one of the Army's hostels or life houses for people who are homeless. I have a lot to thank the Salvation Army for, he said. They treated me like I was worth something when everyone else treated me like rubbish. If no one had showed me the love that they did, I would probably be dead by now. That encounter not only made my day, but it reminded me of how important it is to invest in the lives of others. It was born out of an inconvenient interruption, but it added to the tapestry and the joy of that day. How confident are we that God can work outside of our church-directed service opportunities? I would suggest that it's not easy to live the way that Jesus did. Far easier to separate God time from the rest of our time and focus our attention on his work at those allotted times. But human need isn't like that and opportunities come our way to engage with people, to help and respond to those in need, to have conversations, to go for a walk, um, to have a telephone call, conversation. All of those times are the times when perhaps God sends those people into our lives because they need someone to talk to. They need someone to represent Jesus in those moments. If we follow the example of Jesus, he welcomed the introduction, interruptions to his schedule as God moments. When we are in tune with the Spirit, he sends opportunities our way to serve him. It is in those unexpected twists and turns of our day that we often find a fresh indwelling of his Spirit. People whose stories we can listen to, 
and whose journeys we can have the privilege of being part of. Making time for people, we make time for God. Receiving from him in the richness that those interactions bring and helping others in his name. My guess is that we will never again take such relationships for granted. And perhaps COVID and lockdown has taught us to value each other and the opportunity to be together more than ever. We cannot escape that there will be times when people will interrupt our lives, whether we think we have time for them or not. And we can choose in those moments to follow the example that Jesus sets and be willing to face those situations through the power of Christ within us, to serve as he served, to model Jesus in our world with love and kindness. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for the call that you place upon our lives to be engaged in ministry in your name. Father, we thank you for the reminder that we are here 
as a resource to each other as followers of Jesus, to be engaged and sharing in the ministry that you have called us to. Father, we just pray together as your people that you would bind us together, help us to always be encouragers of each other, help us to carry the burdens of our neighbours and our friends, help us to share in the joys that life brings and the anxieties, and help us to engage meaningfully in a practical ministry of love and encouragement and support among our fellow believers. Lord, hear our prayer, for we ask it in through your holy name. Amen.